So guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And yes, folks, it's official. The Xbox Series S is alive and kicking, just like we all kind of knew it would. You know, that kind of box with the white controller and the new tabs on it and everything. We always knew it was going to happen, but it was just a thing where it hadn't been announced. It wasn't the announcement, guys, that caught everybody unawares. It was the actual offering. Now, we know that the Xbox Series X is the world's most powerful console. It's going to blow everything away, but it's also going to be very expensive. And the one thing that Sony and both Microsoft have not shown their hand on is a date and a price. So that's what makes it this Xbox Series S reveal even more telling and great, really, is that not only have they come out with the date of the 10th of November, but they've also come out with a price. In the US, $299. In the UK, £249. So guys, let's put this into perspective here. This is a brand new console. Next generation. 60% smaller than the Xbox Series S. 120 frames per second at 1440p and upscales to 4K. 4K media playback and supports ray tracing through DirectX with a custom NVMe 512 SSD drive, all for £249. Now, for those of you who don't understand how great that is, and, and let's talk specifics here. We can talk about 4K and world's most powerful consoles and all that stuff, but only 30% of gamers are gaming in 4K. 70%, two-thirds of the gamers are still gaming in 1080p, which means that when you see all these new consoles flying up and the graphics are the best in the world and 4K TV and do not, it's not really talking to that crowd. So all this talk about PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X is great, but two-thirds of the gaming community are not ready for that type of gaming yet. That's a fact. And these people have bought a console in 2013, seven years ago, they've got their Xbox One and they've got their PlayStation 4. And they've been waiting for a brand new spanking console to come out and unveil itself. And this is it. It's a console at a fraction of the cost of what you would pay for to upgrade your PC. And once you upgrade to a 2070 graphics card or a 580 graphics card, you've already blown 250 pounds you've gone way past 250 pounds you've blown that money and all i'm hearing now in forums is seeing people saying whoa 250 quid that's like a whole new set of gaming for me that's like upgrading to the nearest max uh, for the fraction of a cost let's remember guys the xbox 360 beat the playstation 3 based on price the PlayStation 4 beat the Xbox One based on price and performance. When it launched, it launched at $399. The Xbox One with Connect was $499. And the Xbox struggled to do 1080p, but the PlayStation 4 did 1080p quite easily. Where Microsoft are primed, guys, to take the market by storm simply because it's catering for the bulk and the majority of gamers out there. You're coming into the market with new technology, a brand new console <laughs> with 120 frames gaming at 250 quid, $299. That is astonishing. And it doesn't stop there. Not only do you have Game Pass and xCloud, as I said, which is something that Sony doesn't offer, but now you'll be able to, to walk up, and, and this is like, the majority of young gamers, yeah, whose mums and dads goes out and buy them brand new consoles. You'll actually be able to get an Xbox Series S on purchase with interest free. And that's at £25 a month or $25 a month. And if it's an Xbox Series X, it's $35 a month. But the fact of the matter is that you don't even have to put the whole down payment on the console. You don't. And when you Look at the fact that it's, what, £25 a month, so you'll pay off for it in a year. Interest-free. 
I mean, there's no deal better than that in town, guys. No matter which way you look at it, there is no deal better than that in town. Sony now have their backs against the wall because they've got two consoles. One is without a drive and the other one is with a 4K drive. But you can't come down to 250 quid. In fact, you can't even come down to 300 quid because it's still a PlayStation 5. It's still going to cost a lot of money. Many experts are thinking it's going to be about $499. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But the fact of the matter is, this, this new Xbox Series S, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. This thing is primed to blow the doors off just about everything that there is in the market. And um, look, all I can say is well done, Microsoft. I, I, I wasn't expecting this, guys. I really wasn't expecting this. What you have to remember is there's a ton of people playing on Steam machines. And there's a ton of people who have televisions still 1080p. And 4K doesn't suit those people. You now have a console, yeah, that will be able to give you that same power output at 1080p, but actually goes up to 1440p. So if you have a PC gaming monitor, it will fit straight in. Perfect. Perfect solution. Also, PC and console gaming, is it doesn't matter to Microsoft. This is the reason why when I did my last video on gaming, I was like, Sony measures PlayStation consoles are sold. Microsoft, well, they want me measuring that because it would be about their platform. It would be about their Game Pass because you'll be able to play any of their games on PC, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, tablet, and mobile phone. So you don't have to actually buy a console to play their games. Sony is still kind of doing things the old way. They're measuring their, their sales, console sales in their own way. And their model, as I said previously before, is still based on old tier gaming. But this next generation of gaming that Microsoft have, have created, xCloud means you'll be able to play on five different devices. And you don't even have to rebuy the game. You can buy the game once and have the license and play it on anything you like. And not just that, you don't even have to buy the game. Just subscribe to Game Pass. <laughs> just, just subscribe to Game Pass. That's it. And you can play up to 200 games. It's a game changer, guys. It really is. I mean, I'm, I am absolutely blown away and surprised. And Microsoft know what they're doing. And they know Sony can't counter it. This is what happened when Microsoft dropped the Xbox Scorpio. They came out and said, it will do 4K, it's the world's powerful console, and everybody was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then when they launched it, everyone was like, whoa, okay. So when Sony was looking to kind of challenge that, they couldn't. Because they were in a place where the PlayStation Pro was way underpowered, couldn't achieve 4K, and quite frankly, didn't have the infrastructure. So a lot of the games didn't work with it. A lot of the, the titles meant that you had to rebuy the titles. And there was no synergy in terms of with the old games. If you put an old game in, it would just be an old game. With the Xbox, people were playing Halo 3 and Halo 2 in, in 4K. <laughs> because, it, because the Xbox Scorpio, the Xbox One X just upscaled all your old games. I remember in 2005, KOTAR, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Way, a game 15 years old. 4K, upscaled. It was just like, that's what a PC does. So the Xbox One X was essentially just doing everything on the hardware. Whereas with software, it, it, which the Sony relies on, that's where you have to get emulation programs, to emulate the actual games and then do all the work there. Microsoft's like, no, we ain't doing any of that. This thing works like a PC. It's astonishing what they've been able to do and achieve with this console. And guys, if you're looking for a game changer, this Xbox Series X, in my opinion, could have the ability to do exactly what the Xbox 360 did and just take the world by storm. That, that's what it does. In 2007, it blew away Sony and blew away PS3 sales. And I think that this Microsoft console is, is going to give is Sony a lot of concern. And I get that there's a lot of Sony gamers who just, look, I just want a PlayStation. I don't care if I pay £500 for it. 
I just want to play my it's the PlayStation games. That's cool, man. Everybody's like that. Nintendo users want to play their Nintendo games. Microsoft users want to play Microsoft games. And Sony gamers want to play Sony games. That, that, that's it. Remember, guys, the games are the ones that drive the market are those third-party games. Those Call of Duty, the FIFAs, the Maddens, the Destiny 2s, the GTAs. Those are the games that are driving the market. First-party games hasn't really been driving the market for, for, for nearly a decade now. And that's the reason why we haven't really seen much in the way of first-person shooters from Sony. Resistance, Killzone, that was 2011. That was nine years ago. Sony doesn't really have the first-person shooters. You know, and that's the reason why a lot of people buy Xboxes. It's the reason why, you know, you can play Destiny, Call of Duty, Halo, and Gears of War. Yeah, so you've got the whole shebang on there. But Sony's just been lacking in that department. But where Sony has been really successful is their first-party platform games like God of War, Horizon Dawn, um, Spider-Man, Uncharted. Those sort of third-person platform games Sony's been brilliant at. So, uh, the, look, the way the market looks now is it's brilliant for everybody. Sony, Nintendo, Xbox users, everybody kind of has got what they want. And I really can't wait to see where the result is and where that pushes the market. Over to you guys. Speak to you later, man. Peace out.